On June 12, 1993, Nigerians went to the pool to elect a civilian president that would pilot the affairs of the oil-rich country for the next four years. After 33 years of independence as at 1993, the country has been majorly under military rule. The June 12, 1993 presidential election therefore presented an opportunity for a break from the old order. However, the hopes of the Nigerian people would be truncated when General Ibrahim Badambozi Babangida annulled an election that was considered the freest and fairest in the history of the country even to this day. But wait, why did he do that? In this edition on Hispul Media, we bring to your view the events that led to the June 12 presidential election. We will discuss how Babangida orchestrated the crisis that resulted in the annulment and his subsequent removal from office. Please come with me. Remember to like this video and subscribe to Hispul Media if you have not done so already. Thank you. The presidential election of June 12, 1993 promises a break from the 23 years of combined military rule after 33 years of independence. Nigerians were enthusiastic and looked up to this day. However, when the day finally came, the country was thereafter confronted with a more vicious and dangerous form of military rule. The Nigerian head of state, General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida and his cronies, in a flimsy attempt to conceal the continuation of their regime and all the outcome of the elections. However, after so much pressure from the people, he established a phony interim national government that was to be headed by Chief Ernest Shunekon. Even though Babangida stepped aside for the interim national government, this only served to postpone the military's return to politics. Babangida's maradonic maneuvering did not only betray the Nigerian voters who had overcome ethnic, religious and regional sentiment in an effort to rid themselves of military rule but regrettably pushed those divisions back to the fore. Hence, attempts by Nigerians to resist the military were met with brute force. Over a hundred people were thought to have died in pro-democracy rallies one month after the annulment in July 1993. Hundreds of human rights and pro-democracy activists, labor leaders, journalists, students and workers were jailed in months that followed with no access to their family, lawyers, doctors and others despite court orders granting them bail. Media outlets were prohibited and a number of journalists were detained or declared wanted by security forces. Contrary to his pledge for press freedom after the 1985 coup, new stringent press regulations were enacted. So, what then led to the June 12 presidential election? Nigeria had more than 250 ethnic groups. However, the Hausa Fulani, the Yorubas and the Igbos dominated the northern, western and eastern regions respectively. The House of Fulani are mostly Muslim and have historically dominated the Nigerian polities. Even though Nigeria has only experienced civilian rule for 10 of its 33 years of independence as of 1993, no Southerner has ever been elected president. So, the presidential election on June 12, 1993, in which a Southern Muslim, Chief MKO Abiola, won a majority of the vote in all regions of the country would have meant a power shift to the south. The entire nation was determined to maintain unity devoid of ethnic or religious consideration. However, since it started in 1987, Babangida's transition program has been closely controlled by the regime. The government established and managed the two political parties, the Social Democratic Party SDP, and the National Republican Convention NRC. Nigerians were therefore skeptical of any meaningful shift from the old order, even as they anticipated a new government. At the time of the election, both Bashir Atofa of NRC and Chief Moshud Abiola of the SDP were largely seen as close allies of the military, who would be reluctant to deviate from the status quo. However, Bashir Atofa, a Kanu state Fulani Milonia businessman, was virtually unknown to voters, while Abiola, a Yoruba Muslim from Abiyokuta was a well-known philanthropist. In the final days leading up to the elections, Abiola had tried to distance himself from the actions of the military despite his close ties with the regime. Meanwhile, before the elections, Nigerians had doubted the process for two reasons. 
First, the military government picked the political party emblems, wrote their party manifestos, and banned candidates that it deemed inappropriate to contest. Second, the shadowy group Association for Better Nigeria ABN, led by Ato Nzeribe, started a campaign calling on Babangida to remain in power. Although the government denied any connection with the ABN at the time, it will be established that the group was sponsored by the government. But I will come back to that in a moment. Unfortunately though, skepticism about the election grew dramatically just two days before the voting began. On the 10th of June 1993, the High Court in Abuja shocked the nation with a decision in a petition made by the ABN which argued for the election to be cancelled due to claims of corruption. Justice Basi Ikpeme directed that the elections should be postponed while the accusations were investigated and evaluated. However, the electoral body, NEC lawyers, promised to appeal the ruling of the court. The next day, the regime reassured the people that the election would hold the following day, citing a military decree that removed the High Court's ability to rule on election-related matters. Indeed, pursuant to Decree 18 of 1993, no court order may influence the death or timing of an election. On June 12, the election recorded over 30% voter turnout. This was highly significant because Nigerians had lost trust in the military's ability to hold a free, fair and credible elections. Also, Babangida's transition program had lingered for so long and Nigerians became disillusioned with the process. Except for some minor infractions, the election monitors reported that the voting went fairly and smoothly. The election was adjudged to be the most free and fair election in the history of Nigeria and Nigerians were commended for the visible high degree of political maturity and patience in the conduct of the presidential election. All attention will shift to the vote counting and publishing process. Interestingly, the election result published on NEC board in Abuja indicates that regional sentiment among Nigerians was temporarily suspended as Abiola was coasting home to victory in all regions of the country. He was well ahead even in Tofa's hometown, Kanu. But the underhand dealings of the regime were beginning to reveal itself. On June 14, 1993, that is two days after the election, the first and only badge of election results were posted on the board. After this, no additional result ever appeared on the board again. Two days later, on June the 16th, NEC announced the suspension of further announcements of result, citing developments and actions that are pending in court. The announcement cited a restraining order granted the previous day by Justice M.D. Saleh, the Chief Judge of Abuja, which prohibited NEC from publishing the result. The order had been issued in response to a motion filed by Abimbola Davis of the Association for Better Nigeria ABN. Davis had claimed that the elections was plagued by corruption. Reacting to the charges, Judge M. B. Sally ruled that he would consider ordering the annulment of the elections pending further investigation of the allegations brought by ABN. Nigerians and foreigners alike were shocked by the announcement. Now, recall that less than a week earlier, the electoral body had ignored high court order stopping the conduct of the election. Even though a number of additional lawsuits brought before the High Court in Benin City, Lagos, Ibadan, Jos, and Oka in Anambra State contradicted the Abuja Court's decision and resulted in orders for NEC to release the election result, nothing was done to that effect. As if this situation was anticipated, the government had promulgated Decree No. 13 prohibiting the publishing of unauthenticated voting figures. A five-year jail sentence and fine were specified as penalties for violating this decree. Now, as you would find out soon, the regime had stage managed the entire crisis in order to remain in power. However, on June 18, 1993, in defiance of Decree 18, the Campaign for Democracy made good a threat of the previous day and published the election results. 
The result indicated that Abiola had won a majority of the vote in 19 of the 30 states, amounting to about 58.4% of the vote, while Tofa pulled 41.6%. Several prominent individuals, including Woloshenka, politicians and labor unions called for the recognition of the election result, but to no avail. According to Woloshenka, it will be deliberately chaotic to further delay in making the verdict of the Nigerian people official. On June 21, the electoral body filed an appeal against the court order obtained from Abuja court. Immediately, hearing was scheduled for June 23rd. But on the same day, Justice M.D. Saleh ruled that the election was illegal. He cited the next decision to ignore the June 10 court order not to conduct the election until allegations of bribery were investigated as reasons for his judgment. But one interesting thing as pointed out earlier is that the same government had reassured the nation that according to Decree 18, the court lacks jurisdiction on the matter. On June 23, 1993, what every Nigerian feared happened. Babangida announced the annulment of the election. In addition to the annulment, the electoral body, NEC, was dissolved, and Decree 52 of 1992 and Decree 18 of 1993 were all abrogated. The same day, the government threatened a state of emergency in any state where disturbances occurred. It was further stated that the annulment was necessary in order to avoid confusion created by the conflicting court orders. Babangida's statement read in part, The election was annulled to save our judiciary from being ridiculed and politicized locally and internationally. What an excuse. But Nigerians could see through all these obvious shenanigans. Beyond the obvious contradiction posed by the inauguration of an electoral tribunal to handle election-related cases, the Cretatin granted NEC wide-ranging powers to oversee elections, and Decree 52 outlined the transition timetable, including the swearing-in of an elected president on August 27, 1993. So, were these court orders necessary? Or probably, the eventual outcome of the election was not what the government expected. So, what was the effect of the annulment? After the annulment of June 12 presidential election, Nigeria never remained the same again. Spontaneous outcry from all sectors of the society greeted the announcement. Protests were held across the country, especially in the south, including Ibadan, Lagos, Ilefe, Modakeke, and Oshobo. The military authorities unleashed its arsenals on the protesters, killing at least one person and injuring several others on the first day. International organizations, labor unions, religious bodies, and politicians issued statements calling for the recognition of the outcome of the election. Even the military were not left out. Middle-ranking members of the army were not happy with the continued involvement of the military in politics. Even though the entire crisis has been blamed on the confusion arising from conflicting court orders, the Lagos branch of the Nigerian Bar Association announced protests and a boycott of the court to begin on June 38, 1993. On the 38th of June 1993, the Campaign for Democracy announced a nationwide strike. The chairman, Dr. Beko Ransom Kuti, called on workers to stay at home traders and market women to close shops and cars to stay off the road. He encouraged students and youth to organize themselves into civil defense groups and to form human barricades and make bonfires. On the first day of the protest, Nigerians showed their anger. Thousands of protesters occupied the streets of Lagos and marched to Abiola's home compound. Unfortunately, however, the Lagos protest was overtaken by hoodlums who started looting shops and attacking people of other ethnic groups. Police fired tear gas from helicopters and on the ground, but were unable to contain the mobs. Police and military forces were deployed on July 6 to contain the violence, and in the process, they turned their weapons on peaceful protesters and innocent passerby. The protest ended on July 7 when army tanks were sent into Lagos streets. 
The Campaign for Democracy estimated that more than 100 demonstrators were killed by security forces throughout the country while many more were injured or arrested. On July 5, 1993, unperturbed by the protest, Babangida ordered the parties to agree to join an unelected civilian government or face new elections. Even though not clearly specified, it became very clear that Abiola was not going to be allowed to hold office despite being the presumed winner of the election. On July 7, the national chairman of the SDP, Tony Anini, expressed willingness to sacrifice Abiola for the National Assembly and governorship sloth of the party. However, after serious backlash from Abiola and his supporters, the party leadership backed away from the plan. Meanwhile, on July 8, 1993, the Nigerian Muslim leader, Sultan Ibrahim Dasuki, threw his weight behind Abiola. Also, former military leader General Urushiguno Basinjo became one of Babangida's vocal critics. Recall that Obasinjo had in May 1993 founded the Association for Democracy and Good Governors as part of effort to advance democracy in the country. Obasinjo along with Major General Muhammad Ubuari and 10 former generals met to discuss ways to force Babangida from power. On July 12, 1993, the group called for the Babangida administration to be terminated forthwith. On the same day, Babangida reversed himself once again. This time, he announced the need for a new election. The reason for this U-turn was a recognition that an unelected government would lack legitimacy and stability. A new election was then scheduled for August 14, 1993. But Nigerians opposed the move and the demand for the outcome of June 12 election to be respected intensified. The Social Democratic Party SDP, along with 14 out of 30 state governors, threatened to boycott or block the new elections. The Nigerian Labour Congress NLC also rejected a new election on July 15, 1993. Likewise, different court cases were instituted to stop the military regime from conducting a new election or handover power to anyone other than Abiola. But these were all to no avail. On July 19, 1993, the government issued a number of new decrees. One of the decrees barred all courts from hearing cases related to the June 12 election. The second one gave retroactive backing to the annulment of the election and called for new voting, but gave no date for transferring power. Interestingly, as alluded to earlier, the military's involvement in the crisis was finally exposed on July 16, 1993. It was revealed that the military had engineered the political crisis to its own advantage. Abimbola Davis, a member of the Association for Better Nigeria, who had filed the lawsuit that resulted in orders to hold the June 12, 1993 presidential election and then to prevent the announcement of his result, held a news conference. He informed reporters that the regime had secretly organized the Abuja lawsuit in order to derail the transition and prolonged Babangida stay in office. Davis went on to beg for forgiveness for his role in the crisis that followed the June 12 election and its annulment. Thereafter, he fled the country with his family. Faced with continued opposition to a new election, the government indicated that it would consider another arrangement. After this announcement, the Babangida regime was forced to step aside in an arrangement that gave birth to the interim national government to be headed by Chief N.S. Shunekon. We will look at that in the next video. But as the June 12 crisis continued well into 1994, Abiola later declared himself president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Nigeria, putting him at odds with the Abacha regime. For more on what happened, click the video displayed here. Remember to like this video and subscribe to his pro media. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.